Good morning. <laughs> uh, happy first Sunday of Christmas to you all. Uh, glad to see you all come out this morning. I know it's really cold for us standing out here, so uh, stay warm in your cars. We will get out if you want to to sing some carols. Um, there was an email that went out if you are on the email list that has what we're going to be singing. So if you have that on your phones, you can pull that up. Um, just a few announcements. For those watching online or for those of you who don't have the addresses for our offerings, make sure that you do continue to send your offerings in and your tithes. Um, for Jarrett, that address um, is 109 Morningside Drive in Elkview. Uh, that's a 25071 zip code. And for Mount Tabor, it's Post Office Box 94, Pinch, West Virginia, 25156. Uh, we will make sure to put those into the comments and uh, make sure that goes out on the email as well. Um, also, for those of you watching at home or even in your cars, if you have a prayer request, make sure you get those sent in early, um, especially since I'm up here, I can't monitor it as much today. If we do not get them in time, we will continue to pray throughout the week for those that come in late. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Oh, well, there's one more. Uh, the relaunch team. There will be a meeting sometime after the first of the year. Um, we'll get you through New Year's and let you celebrate and then we'll reevaluate and see how we're doing as far as staying on the parking lot or being able to possibly go back into the sanctuary. Um, our scripture this morning is going to be Psalm 148. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let, pray, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded them, and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all, the, and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beast and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, king of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let him praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above heaven and earth. He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him, praise the Lord. That is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Okay, uh, we're ready for children's sermon for Mike. Good morning! Oh, beautiful, crisp fall morning. Or No, it's actually winter now. It turned winter a few days ago. But I want to talk a little bit about Christmas as we just finished Christmas on Friday. I want to just tell you a little bit about when I was a child. I'm glad my mom's not here to she could tell you a few more things about it but when I was a child my dad worked at the glass factory and my mom she spent a lot of time at the neighbor's house helping we had an old couple neighbor so I'm a little kid Christmas presents under the tree I would sneak try to peek in the corners to see what we were getting me and my sister did that all the time and we would try every now and then unfortunately we would rip a piece of the wrapping paper. We'd hurry up and get some tape and hide it on back. But it never failed. Dad and Mom would get back to the house, and they knew someone was peeking at the Christmas presents. And I could still hear her now. Michael! I don't know why it was always me, 
that got called out. But I just wanted to peek and see what was in the presents. Because back then, we started putting up Christmas trees generally right after Thanksgiving. And then we would have presents show up like the next week. So you have three to four weeks, there's presents under that tree. And as a little kid, <laughs> you know, we're just curious. We want to know what's under that tree inside those presents for us. I was smarter than my sister because I knew if it was the typical rectangle box, I said, don't peek in there, those are clothes. It was the bigger boxes we wanted to peek in because we knew that those were toys. But also, with we'd get toys and things, and what did we always need for toys? Batteries. And every year, for probably the first four or five years, and then finally, I think they decided to buy bulk batteries. We didn't have batteries. We, we couldn't play with them. But as a kid, just think about that, having to wait three to four weeks to get a present. Now, I want you to think about having to wait 33 years to get your present. I'm going to tell you a story about uh, a Christmas present in, in the Bible. And again, it was a long time, 33 years. It said, once upon a time, God asked a teenage girl named Mary if she would help him give a gift to the whole world. Mary said yes. And so one night in Bethlehem, the gift, Jesus, was delivered. Mary took strips of cloth and wrapped up the gift nice and snug, and she spent the next years taking good care of God's gift to the world. And just like me when I was a kid, peeking into my presence, there were many folks who got a, a peek at God's gift to the world. A man named Jarius was one. He had a little girl who got really sick, and she died. Jarius went to Jesus and asked Jesus to heal his little girl. Jarius got a peek of the hope God's gift brings to the whole world when, brought, when Jesus brought his little girl back to life. Jesus' helpers also got a peek at God's gift when they were in a boat out on the lake and a big storm came. The winds blew and the waves were high, and Jesus' friends were scared and they were, that they were going to die. So they woke Jesus up, and they got a peek at God's gift to the world when Jesus told the storm to be still, and the waters became peaceful. A blind man who had never seen anything at all since he was born got a peek at God's gift to the world when Jesus spit in the dirt, put mud on the man's eyes, and the blind man could see. God's gift brought the blind man great joy. Then one night in the garden, some soldiers got a peek at God's gift. When they came to take Jesus to take him to the cross, his friend Peter was frightened and he wanted to protect Jesus. So he took his sword and cut one of the men's ears off. The man got a peek of the love of Jesus when Jesus reached out and touched his ears and healed it. The next day, when Jesus took his cross to Calvary, we all got a peek of his love as he died there for our sins. After he died, some friends took his body down and wrapped it in some of the strips of cloth much like his mother Mary had done when he was a tiny baby in the stable 33 years before. Then they carried his body to the tomb and put a big stone there to block the door so nobody could steal God's gift to the world. A couple of days later, some friends came back to the tomb to check on Jesus' body, and they saw that the big stone was rolled away and the tomb was open. Two other friends looked inside and saw that the gift had finally been unwrapped. The only thing left was just the strips of cloth that the gift had been wrapped in. God's gift to the whole world, the very first Christmas present ever, was born in Bethlehem, and the world waited for 33 years for it to be unwrapped. During those years, people got peaks of hope, peace, joy, and love that God's gift would bring. But only when Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead was God's gift finally unwrapped. You know that new toy or video game that you got for Christmas? The more time you spend with it, the better you get at it and the more you learn. That's what we need to do with God's gift. The more time that we spend with Jesus, the more we will learn from him and like him more. So let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you've given us. We know that Christmas has come and gone and all the gifts are unwrapped. Lord, we thank you for that first Christmas gift that you gave to the whole world. I ask that we all fully unwrap God's gift and spend a lot of time in the next year learning to know him better. 
In your name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. Mike, that might be a better sermon than mine. Uh, you can go now. That was excellent. God is good, amen? amen. Well, good morning to all of you. It is uh, most decidedly the coldest morning for an outdoor service that we've ever had. Um, when we looked at the weather last night, it looked like it'd be into the upper 30s by the time the service started. No, uh, <laughs> I think it was, what, 24 when we walked over here? 25. It's 25 right now. Yeah, okay. Well, Heather's reading the thermometer on the car. But you know what? It's a great place to be. It is a beautiful morning. I am a, uh, I'm a snow person. So, like, I don't need a ton of it. I don't want to foul up the roads and everything else. But this right here, I love the way this looks. It's just so beautiful to me. Um, if you'd like to, we're actually going to sing a couple of songs. If you would like to stand out in front of your cars, you are welcome to. I do know it is a cold morning, so if you choose not to, I understand that too. But if you'd like to, uh, an email went around with the lyrics. They are familiar, a couple of Christmas carols that uh, I think we all know. And I did make sure to use like familiar sets of lyrics, unlike what I accidentally did a week or two ago. So, so if you would like to get out and sing, you are welcome to do that. If you'd like to stay in your cars, I understand that too. But uh, we're gonna join in just a second. I'm gonna pop my mask on here. Let's join together and sing Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love amen i'm <clears throat> gonna move to uh the first noel if you know this one you know there's about five verses i only use three of them because i'm saving the other two because they're all about the wise men so we're gonna <laughs> we'll sing them on epiphany but let's join together in the first noel the first Noel the angel did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night. That was so deep. Noel, 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 Noel. Born is the King of Israel. They looked it up and saw a star. Shining in the east beyond them far and to the earth it gave great light and so it continued both day 
guys can hop back in your cars. We're going to go to prayer here in just a second. Let me pop this glove back on. Heather, I might need your phone. My phone? The iPad's down to 5%, and, and you might need to download my sermon. I know we've had uh, several come in online, and oh, thank you, yes, we had that battery pack. This, uh, this little portable battery, which is unrelated to anything, is going to be a lifesaver because the iPad is down to about 5% right now, and if we didn't plug that in, there's a very good chance that I could get about a page and a half into the sermon and all the notes are gone. And I'm pretty sure I could wing it, but I'm pretty sure it would be a little scary, so I'll fix that. I'll fix it. We did have a couple of prayer requests come in. And uh, one which we, we knew about yesterday, I uh, got a call from Barb Ratliff. Sam is uh, in the hospital right now, and they are running some tests. He's, he's in AFib, they said, and uh, of course he's got good care where he is. I actually spoke to him by phone yesterday. He sounded really good. It sounded like he was in real good spirits, but we do want to keep him in prayer. And uh, have a lot of folks traveling right now we want to remember them and uh, and you know in the middle of all the celebrations this can be a pretty tough time of year for folks who have uh, lost loved ones and and i know especially in the churches we've lost several over the last couple of years folks that we would enjoy spending time around the holidays with you know think of the allen family especially and, and uh probably most recently as as church congregation goes but uh so we just want to we want to remember all those who are grieving this christmas also and uh, for any other requests that uh, you guys have, lift those in your hearts, and I'll lift those kind of all together again at the end of the prayer. So let's join in prayer right now. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the beautiful day. Lord, even though it is a little chilly, we thank you for the snow and, and Lord, the reminder of our sins washed away when we see that. And also just the beautiful scenery, Lord. It is a, a gorgeous morning today. We see your handiwork in all of that. Lord, we ask that you'd be with the requests this morning that have come in. We think of Sam in the hospital and ask that you would touch his heart, Lord. Just put it right back into rhythm where it's supposed to be. And uh, Lord, as he is there, quicken the minds and the, the thoughts and the hands of the doctors and nurses, Lord, and all that they are doing, that his treatment would uh, get him back to being fully recovered as quickly as possible. Lord, we ask for your continued peace and presence with him and also with Barb who can't be with him in the hospital right now. Lord, we ask that you would be with both of them especially. Lord, we think of those who are grieving this Christmas, and Lord, we know that can be a, a tough thing to come through the holidays, especially the first ones after the loss of someone. And Lord, we ask for a special measure of your comfort. Lord, you tell us that. You are the God of all comfort. And Lord, we rest on that right now. We ask that you would just abide real close with those folks who are in most need of your touch today in your presence. Think of all of those who might be traveling and coming back from, from uh, visits and family and all of that and ask that you would keep them safe on the roads as well. And uh, Lord, just bless them all also. Be with us in the rest of the service today. And uh, Lord, help us to remember the, the miracle of your incarnation. And Lord, that it's not just for a few. Lord, it's for all. So Lord, go with us and guide us today. We ask it in your name. Amen. Let me get this adjusted here. You need my phone, let me know and I'll bring it I don't know. I'll find out in a second. Okay. It's charging. Still, uh, this thing's still having a moment here. There we are. Okay. <laughs> I was afraid the whole sermon was gone just for a second. You guys, that would, I mean, I know I wrote it, but it would have been, uh, that would have been tough. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. We did. We had a very, um, it was different than any other Christmas I've ever had in my life. It's the first Christmas since I was a kid where we didn't see my parents at some point on Christmas Day. We had a very low key kind of Christmas. We were here at the house. It was just us. We had had Kaylee uh, the day before and uh, had done Christmas with her, but as far as that went, it was it was just us uh, on Christmas Day. It was actually very nice. We had a, we had a very nice day. Um, 
We uh, didn't do much in the way of presents, and that was okay, although uh, Heather got me some thermal socks that are helping me out a lot right now. I'm actually wearing them this morning. So I hope you had a wonderful celebration also, even though it was a little different this year. Uh, this is the first Sunday of Christmas. Um, the 12 days of Christmas, we all sing the song. We've all known that for all our lives. A lot of people start counting down 12 days until they get to the 25th. It actually begins on the 25th and runs all the way until January 6th with Epiphany. So Merry Christmas, still. We have been in this uh, company is coming mode for Advent and now company has arrived. The Messiah has come, hope has burst onto the scene. Maybe not, I don't know, maybe not burst. Perhaps that's the wrong word. Hope has arrived. That's probably better. Um, quietly, at least to many. Well, the shepherds sure didn't get a, a gentle nudge to say, hey, he's here. They, uh, they got a little more than that. More on that in a, in a minute. But today we're looking at a couple of passages. And both of them are pretty famous passages. Both of them I actually quoted at the Christmas Eve service, if you watch that. But both of them are really important for us and for everyone. Because, folks, Christmas is about a hope like no other. Light in the darkness and ultimately God becoming incarnate as a human, as a baby. And that might not sound like much, but listen, that baby changes everything. We're going to start in a passage that is not always written on Christmas. We're going to be, or read on Christmas. We're going to begin in the beginning of the Gospel of John. So if you have your Bibles with you, feel free to turn over to John chapter 1, and we're going to start right at verse 1. There are some incredible things in this passage we want to touch on. John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. I'm going to read down through verse 14. And uh, just to set the scene for you real quick, if this passage is not, if you've not done a study on this passage, every time we're talking about the Word, we're talking about Jesus here. So John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1, and it says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through Him. He was not the light. But he came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. And he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. Lord, as we get into the message this morning, first I would ask for your touch and anointing, and Lord, for your glory alone this morning, all that is said and done. Lord, help us to see what that Word really means, the scope of what is being said here. And Lord, remind us of that hope, that miracle of Christmas, and that it is for all of us. We ask this in your name. Amen. The pictures in this passage are pretty remarkable. Um, it's affirming to the readers that Jesus is God, but that God the Father he is also God. And we, start, we get into Trinitarian theology here, and that's a, a long, deep dive for another day. We're going to take a deep enough dive as it is. The Greek word for this word, word, every time you see the word word, that word is logos. And this is important, okay, because this was a concept that sort of originated in classical Greek thought. John is definitely writing the beginning of this to who would have been the wisest people of the time, philosophers in the Greek world at that point. Point. And Logos kind of referred to what is generally said as like a universal divine reason that sort of transcended any oppositions or imperfections of the cosmos. Now, go home and quote that at your dinner table to somebody who asks you about it today. That's right. Uh, I know that that's very clunky. 
But basically what it is is the Greeks had this idea of this universal truth that would have been at the heart of everything. That's what they were looking for, and that was the word logos. The word logos also is where we get the English word logo. Most of you will probably know what that is. When you see a logo, you know what the logo represents. When you see the golden arches, that's a logo. You know you're going to go get a Big Mac, right? You know, see the little peacock over in the corner of your TV, you know you're watching NBC. That bell over top of a fast food restaurant tells you you're about to have a delicious chalupa. I mean, a logo is an outward expression of something else. And that's where this word comes from. Uh, you see that logo, you know what it points to. So hold those ideas in your head, that, that long sought for universal truth and that outward expression thing, and then listen to parts of this passage again. Because along comes John, filling in the fullness of all of those meanings. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I am going to read a few verses again. And just know, every time I get to the word word, it's logos. It's that idea that we just talked about. Listen again. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the logos. The logos was with God, and the logos was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Look one more time at verse 14. And the Logos became flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory. The glory is of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. That sort of lights all that up a little more, doesn't it? Fills in some of those gaps that this... This Logos was the quest of all of their thought and reason. And John says, here it is. This is Christ. This is who fills in all of those gaps. Christ is the Logos of God, the outward and knowable expression of the invisible, all-powerful God. God himself stepping into humanity as humanity so that we could know him fully, and that is amazing. The concept of all of this is just amazing. And John is writing to philosophers. I know I touched on that. But in fact, the first part of John's gospel is actually written in a different Greek dialect than the rest of it. The beginning of this is written in classical Greek. That would have been academia, man. If you were in school, if you were in like the highest universities back then, everything you read, all of your classes, that would have all been in classical Greek. And most of the rest of the gospel is written in what's called Koine Greek. That word means common. This would have been street Greek. This would have been what you talk to your friends in. You know how sometimes you have a much more reserved kind of dialect for when you're in an academic setting, or I might speak a little differently up here than I would while I'm watching a football game? You know, that kind of thing. It's the difference between classical Greek and Koine Greek, except it's a little more. Classical was very set apart. It's actually written a little differently. Anyway, John's written the beginning of this to the philosophers. And so for somebody else who didn't know the rest of the story, who just saw the beginning of that, they might think, you know, well, that's all well and good, but I'm not educated enough to learn this. Or, you know, that's that's so high and God is perfect. And now you're telling me this guy's the Logos and I don't I'm that's a little over my head. Or or God's perfect and I'm not and I'm not good enough to get to know him. I don't know anything about Logos. What are you up there talking about? It can be really easy to hear all that stuff and feel very overwhelmed. It can be easy to think or to feel that maybe God only came for the best, the brightest, the most elite. But no. Because beginning in Luke chapter 2, verse 8, it says in the same region there were shepherds. <laughs> Guys, shepherds. These were the lowest of the low. This is if the outcasts had outcasts, these were them. I mean, if you wanted a, this is true, if you wanted a lower social status than the shepherds, you had to go find a stray dog. It's not a joke. These guys were the very bottom. And the scripture in Luke tells us this, in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them 
And, and the King James says they were sore afraid. I love that. It means they were so afraid that it was painful for them. They were filled with fear. The angel said to them, fear not, for I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on the earth peace, goodwill toward men. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known abroad the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they have seen and heard. You know, earlier I said the shepherds did not get a quiet little nudge. I mean, entering in, the, in a barn was a pretty quiet way for the Son of God to come into the world. But the shepherds got an awfully loud announcement. And folks, of all the people to receive that message of hope, it was the shepherds. God made sure, God made sure that when the Logos came, he came in a way that it was known he came for everyone. This is not hope that is just for the elite. It is not hope for people sitting in an ivory tower somewhere. It's for all of us. And with all that philosophizing, you might think he would have come with you know, golden staircases and big trumpets and all of that, but no. He came in as a baby, laying in a feeding trough in a stable. He came as a baby. And so did you. Jesus literally became one of us. He never ceased being God. He was fully God and fully man, but he literally became one of us in order to save us. And folks, that's available for all of us. That might, that might sound impossible, and you might be reasonable to think that that sounds absolutely impossible, and it would be for us. We could not give our lives to save the world, but God has a different answer. That's what I find so often. If I think something can't be done, or I think, well, that's crazy, God shows up and says, I have a completely different answer for you. Scripture does that all the time. Jesus is both God and man fully, and what is impossible for us becomes possible and doable and reality when God gets involved. There was a song a few years ago from the Gaither Vocal Band, and uh, it was called The Glorious Impossible. If you've not heard this, oh my goodness, I'll, I'll send it around on a link this afternoon because it's an incredible song, but the first verse of that song goes like this, and I'm going to sing it for you. See the virgin is delivered in a cold and crowded stall mirror of the father's glory lies beside her in the straw he is mercy's incarnation marvel at this miracle for the virgin gently holds the glorious impossible Folks, the Holy Spirit moves and a virgin conceives. The word, the logos, becomes flesh. God and man together and the light shines in the darkness. Impossible? By human standards, absolutely. But hear this sentence carefully. That night in a stable, a virgin held her newborn son, who was the word made flesh because God loves you the glorious impossible to top it all off that announcement came to a bunch of shepherds because that message is for everyone the gift of christmas the hope of christmas folks the glorious impossible belongs to you and to me and to everyone
But this is gonna sound like a really hard turn. I promise it makes a point. Frasier is one of my favorite shows. If you've ever watched sitcoms, that is one of my favorite ones. It's still funny. And it's been off the air for a number of years, but I still dig it up online and watch it. But sometimes, in the middle of its funniness, it can be really poignant and thought-provoking. And there was a, a Christmas episode, one of the very early seasons, that was called Miracle on 3rd or 4th Street, which I love. But Fraser, he works on the air as a radio psychiatrist, if you've never seen this. He takes calls and helps people with their problems on the radio. And he has to work on Christmas Day. And he's got a rash of the most depressing calls ever. He's not happy about being at work. And now, if you've ever been at a radio station on a holiday, and I don't expect that most of you probably have, but I have. I've, I've worked a number of Thanksgivings and Christmases, so I've, I've been there before. But if you've ever been at a radio station on a holiday, you'd know the office is generally closed, which means nobody is going to come in there except the people who are working, which means everybody tends to just show up in whatever's comfortable. All of the regular work attire goes out the window. I mean, you might have people show up to do their show on Christmas in their pajamas. I mean, it's it's kind of like that. It also means that for the guys, anyway, most of us would not have bothered to shave, and we're probably running around in an old beat-up sweatshirt or something. Frazier in this episode is no exception. He looks really disheveled. So he goes, he does his shift, and after that he kind of ends up in a diner, very sort of lowly Christmas. And he's at this diner with what are mostly poor or homeless folks. But by the way he's dressed, he, he appears to fit right in. He finishes his meal and realizes he's left his wallet at the office. One of the other guys in the restaurant passes a hat, and everybody quickly covers his meal. And as Fraser's apologizing, the gentleman has this incredible line, because he says this, don't be embarrassed. Look at it this way. The rest of the year belongs to the rich folks with their fancy houses and their expensive foreign cars. But Christmas... Christmas is for guys like us. You might hear all that philosophizing at the beginning of this sermon. You might still be confused by that whole Lagos thing. That's okay. The glorious impossible sounds a bit like a paradox. And you might think that's all a little too high for me. Well, Jesus didn't think so. God didn't think so. Because you see, all of that aside, Christmas comes down to a baby in a manger. God has come in a way where we can know him. Who is this hope of Christmas for? Sure, it's for the philosophers and the sages and all the rest if they'll grab onto it, but as Fraser's friend says there, listen, Christmas belongs to guys like us. It belongs to folks like us. It's for everyone, everywhere. It's that baby in a manger, and in that baby in a manger, we've seen the glory of God. In the call to the shepherds, we see the love of God, and in his life and sacrifice and resurrection, we receive the grace of God, and it all began there, in a stable that was little more than a cave, in a feeding trough, where a virgin holds her newborn glorious impossible, the little Lord Jesus. Because God loves you. Amen? Amen. We're going to close, <clears throat> excuse me, here in just a second. And uh, as we do, just, just ponder that for a minute. If you need to reconnect with the fact that Christmas really is for everybody, that maybe you're feeling a little less Christmassy this year. That's understandable. This year has been nuts. Maybe you're having just a tough time. Maybe you're having trouble getting your head around all of this. And you just need to step back for a minute and look nowhere else except the baby in the manger. Because, folks, that's how he came. He came so we could know him. Get a hold of him right there and then hang on for the rest of the ride because that's a 33-year-long Christmas present, as Mike said earlier. Look at that baby in a manger and see the love and the glory Away in a manger, no crib for a bed, the little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down where he lay, the little Lord Jesus.
Jesus asleep on the hay. Are you thankful for that gift this morning? Amen. Amen. I certainly am. We're going to close here in just a second. Um, I don't know that I have any other in the way of announcements except what Heather had before. Uh, again, relaunch team folks, we're going to, we'll get back together again after New Year's because I know it's just all very busy and hectic right now. So probably next week sometime, not not the next seven days, but sometime right after that, we'll get together. First week of January, somewhere. And uh, and look ahead and see where we are and where we're headed. Uh, so uh, other folks, do be in prayer for the relaunch team as we you know, take a look at all of this. We may be out here on the lot for a little longer, but hopefully as the vaccine starts to filter down, we can begin looking at when we can maybe go inside. That's, that's the hope. I mean, I can stand out here and preach in the snow. I'm not afraid to do that, but be nice to get back in the buildings as soon as we can. So um, do keep the requests that we had come in. Uh, keep those in, uh, in your thoughts this week. Heather, do we have any other ones? No? Okay. All right. Well, uh, don't forget, we'll uh, have the second row go and then this row. It's just easier to get out that way. I don't know that there's any ice back there. When we drove the lot last night, it didn't look too bad. But just, just watch. A couple of patchy spots here and there, so just be careful. And with that, uh, let's go ahead and close. So may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit fill your hearts this morning, guard your minds, and remind you of the joy and the hope of Christmas and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain in you now and always. Amen. God bless. We'll see you next week.